Greetings and welcome. Welcome to Grow Moringa Farms in Plant City, Florida. I'd love to give you a quick walkabout and tour before it gets too hot and the sun gets really blazing. It just looks so beautiful with these Moringa trees starting to pop out. And I got some grass cut yesterday, so it's really easy to walk around. So let's go ahead and do a quick little tour of our Moringa farm here in Plant City, Florida. You can see I've got a raised bed of Moringa trees here. And I planted several thousand trees in this raised bed and have been cutting them back all summer. All summer I've been cutting them back, cutting them back. And uh, I've got a prominent big tree in the front right here and uh, have a big tree in the front of every single row that we have. And there's nine rows now with several hundred trees that are coming back really, really thick, really thick. And I um, really learned a lot this summer uh, from these raised beds. Here's raised bed number three with a nice big tree in the front. And also, <laughs> this one needs to be cut back. She's, uh, she's already been kind of pushed over by the wind and stuff. So we're going to have to bring her back even more because there's a tropical storm on the way. Should be here by the 29th. A couple hundred trees come back. I've already trimmed these trees back multiple times throughout the summer. Gotten lots of greens. And now the trees are big enough. Here you can see uh, that are producing large tap roots and really thick stems. So this one's just coming back. I just trimmed this one back. Got a nice big prominent moringa tree in the front here that needs to also get cut back. Look at that, that's so cool how she's just starting to grow right back up, right? Another big one here. And I got some sweet potatoes in the front. I just trimmed all of these ones really back recently within the last few days. But uh, lots of big, big trees coming back. Here you can see, um, been doing really well with the bananas. The bananas are really popping along the line here, doing really well. Got a nice little dwarf red. These are all the turmeric, white turmeric. This particular tree is all white turmeric. I replanted this one out just with all white. Got a little bit of a mulberry here. She might have some mulberries on her right. She'll be ripening up. Once it gets a little bit colder, then she'll start ripening up mulberries. Bed number eight with a nice, nice tree in the front. And then bed number nine with a nice big tree in the front. And she's coming back a little bit slower because this particular bed was the last bed that I made. So the soil is the freshest. Uh, there was a lot of sticks and a lot of stems down here in this bed. And so she kind of, I think she early in the summer got a fungus. Um, you can usually tell if the leaves start turning yellow or if they're wilting or if they have brown spots. Lots of mold, bacteria, fungus can form on the leaves if they're not kept high and dry enough. But it could have just been the fungus down below that was like breaking down the sticks because this bed is heavy, heavy with the freshest sticks and so by next year this bed will be just like all the others you can see i've got big big moringa trees that i harvested in other locations that line the um the edges of the bed and then this is our big mama tree in the front oh hey oj oj is out here just chilling in the driveway what's up boy hey buddy I got a nice big moringa tree out here, really starting to form really nicely, these three here. I had to cut her all the way back. She was falling over, but um, she's really going to start coming out nicely. The same thing with this one. I got to get some soil over top. This one is, is um, you know, this was just a, a mound of mulch that I put here. Had mounds and mounds of mulch dropped off in this location for a whole year uh, before I even started building the beds. Let's go ahead and go over to the, uh, the hedge. So I'll show you the hedge here. This is a nice big oak tree and we've got a nice hedge condition. Uh, I still have to get this grass cut back, but you can see 
I stood this tree up earlier in the summer. She was falling over and I put some soil around her. Now she's really, really coming back nicely. This was just a stick. This was just a stick. Wow. And she's way up there. Same with this one. Got a nice tree at the, at the end of each one of these rays of sunshine out from the tree. These are all going to be my raised beds. You'll see what I mean exactly here in a second. See this? This is my raised bed that goes out into the tree. Raised bed that goes out into the tree, the oak tree. And then this one is the front edge of the property where we just planted these, these four big ones. And then the big, the big four here, these were huge. Actually, we had the tree trimming companies come out, drop a mulch, and they were like, hey, you might want to get these trees back because they're already touching the lines. So this is nice because I just got these trees cut back and now they're really bushing out nicely. And um, really starting to form out a nice rotunda. You can see this big base in the middle, cut back. Got the second tier here, cut back. Now got the third tier cut back and now it's about to grow out into its fourth tier to get a nice, big, flush, full tree. Same thing with these trees here. This is one of the raised beds. Starting row number one, I have a double row. They're staggered where it's tree and then five feet up and over is, is, is a tree and then five feet up over is a tree. So in the line, so this tree and that tree that you see are 10 feet apart in the line and I have a double double row so like this one is in the other line and then that one is in the same line as that now these trees that you see here in the middle these were actually just seedling trees that I planted as seeds and those are going to be going in boxes or replanted around the property um, for shipping or replanting same thing with this this is how those trees started was a line of little baby trees Just like this, I'm going to finish planting out the rest of this row here. Just needed to get those trees. These trees mostly cut back this week. Uh, finally got these, all of these trees cut back. Um, good thing too, just in time for the tropical storm, because I know by the end of August into September is when we usually get the tropical storm. So you can see all these trees have been really nicely cut back short. There's no real tall standing standing branches they've all been harvested i have probably probably 100 kilos worth of dried dried loose leaf now that i'm going to be able to live off of throughout the winter time as as a supply not only for myself but for sales farmers markets this is when farmers markets are really going to be popping is in the winter time and so i'll probably start getting back as i say like a market every week Maybe even just like the Tuesday market would be a really nice one in Newport Ritchie. It's like an hour drive, but Tuesday would be really nice. Just because weekends, I usually have the farm open. I got all these trees cut back short. You can see lots of spiders out here, spider webs. I'm really happy though that all these trees now are looking really good. We kind of got through the tail end of the, the real summer, summer rains. I mean, it rained. Honestly, it's been a pretty dry summer. As much as it has rained, it hasn't rained as much as I remember in the last couple years that I've been here. I've been here for about three years now. And um, this is my orchard after about three years worth of growth. Same thing here. I got a lot of these, these little seedlings planted out in the middle row here. And these will all grow up to be nice big trees that I can ship in the mail uh, over the next year. This is a big mama right here. <laughs> that was huge that I got trimmed back really nicely right here. You can see I pulled back this, this piece that you see just about a week or so ago and now she's sprouting out a bunch more little shoots. But now you can see that she's really, really flushed out. Might be pushing out some flowers up here. 
And then we have our fourth row. That's just really getting established. I can tell that the soil is still really breaking down a lot because these leaves yellow out a lot more and they're in a very, very deep pile of mulch. But as time goes, the roots are starting to really expose themselves. The mulch is getting compressed and then they do something like this. But um, still lots of greens up here. And then what I need to do this week is finish out this row right here, level walk through here with the mower, level out this mulch and continue to plant some extra big trees that I have around here on this, on this beautiful part. So just wanted to give you a quick little tour and a walkabout of the orchard, the hedge and the intensive. Those are the three ways that you can grow Moringa on this beautiful Sunday. And I'll be live at 3 p.m. Eastern time today on YouTube. Get on my newsletter, go to growmoringa.com. You can get notifications and updates when I go live. So that way you never really miss a beat as to how to grow, harvest, package, and sell Moringa for income. And for your, either for yourself, or for food, or even for, as a business is what I really, really want to teach people is how to turn their empty property into cash flow. So these are the top tips and tricks for making extra income from your backyard. And you can do this in an urban setting as well. Just fill up your whole backyard with Moringa, just like this, and these beautiful, beautiful majestic trees. I got a turmeric bed over here and um, would love to give you all a tour. I'm gonna be uh, having an open farm for members so our turmeric bed here is doing really well. And we have a whole nother row of Moringa trees back here. Um, on 9-9, you can come in to the farm, get a full tour with me. And I would love to spend the whole day with you. On 9-9, it's going to be open to members from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And we're going to be showcasing the how-tos. We're going to be demonstrating how to make make products, how to make things, and, uh, and how to wash and, and dry and package and label your Moringa products. We want to be able to teach everybody and raise the industry up, teach everybody how to make labels and how to get your products sold and make, make good sales posts is actually what I do a lot is just a lot of training of helping you to promote your product. Matter of fact, yesterday we had a member that said, hey, I've got four pounds of powder. And she showed the whole process and she had a member hit her up and they bought the whole, the whole lot. And she's like, I'll be out of powder until October 10th. So keep in touch. <laughs> so we've got our members now starting to make make wonderful sales and posts to help them make income as well. This is a local effort and also a national effort that we're creating a supply chain. I can't actually scale my retail company. I can't scale my, my Moringa products company until I have a thousand or 2000 other growers in the USA that are packaging and producing high quality Moringa. Otherwise, I'm just left to going to India and Africa and other countries for a supply. But I don't want to do that. I want to get my supply from my members. So when we start really ramping up retail products, sales into the millions, hundreds of millions of dollars a year, the only way that I'm going to be able to do that is with a local supply. And that's where I will be able to buy from you. Right now, it's much more of like a... <laughs> sell it as, as you can and get practice in selling and make as many sales. So that way you learn the process of growing, harvesting, packaging, processing. And um, then by the time you get some experience, it might take another year to two years. That's also when I will also be ready to buy your Moringa as a member in bulk, continually as a contract. We've got some members right now that are in DR, Dominican Republic, that are planting out hundreds of hectares right now. Uh, we've got members in Jamaica planting out hundreds of hectares, members in Puerto Rico, in Mexico, 
and many of the southern mid uh, Latin countries that also have great, great weather and are a lot closer than say India and Africa as a supplier. So if you're on this hemisphere, on this side, we would love to also talk and get you in the members area and help you get sales because it's happening. I'm getting lots of calls. Well, we had a guy that wanted to order 4,000. He wanted to start off ordering 400 tons of powder this month, 400 tons. To put into perspective, 20 to 25 tons is one container ship. And he's saying he needs 400 tons a month to supply his, his animal farm and to supply his cattle that he's got growing and he's making animal feed. So these are the calls that I'm getting right now. And I need all the members to increase the level of production because if you've got a kilo, you've got a kilo, we can start to do some real, real great things with supplying not only people, but pets, animals, fodder food as fodder animals, and also um, plants. Because I put powder down here in my raised beds. I put moringa powder, I sprinkle moringa powder in my raised beds. I also make a juice, a moringa juice, a biostimulant. Put that down on my raised beds. That's how I feed my microgreens. So I got so much more to talk about. I'll be live at, on YouTube at 3 p.m. Eastern time this Sunday. Check me out so that way you can learn more about making extra income from your very own Moringa trees. I really appreciate you for coming in. At least subscribe to the Grow Moringa YouTube channel and like this video so we can share it with other people. And I will see you later. Have a great day. Peace and love.